Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stranger here and welcome to another YouTube music production video. And in today's video, we're going to be doing the high-pitched version of the Foghorn. I know we've done a couple different versions in my channel already, and I've been getting a lot of requests for this high-pitched version, which producers such as Boo and Serum have used. And as you've heard in the demo, I did a rendition of Boo's Veteran. So we're going to be showing you how to do this in Serum today. And if you haven't seen my previous Foghorn videos, I encourage you guys to watch those as well. It'll give you the foundation to build the Foghorn sound. And finally, if you want to stay updated on all my latest videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It'll help my channel out as well. And I'm going to say if we can get it up to 400 likes, then I'm going to give you guys the preset for free. Okay, so let's get right into it. So I have Serum open here. And then there's a number of different waveforms we can use. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a couple of my favorite waveforms to make the sound. But to start, we're going to go under the analog section, the mellow but unstable waveform. And then we're going to turn on oscillator B and we're going to bring the level all the way down since we're only using it for FM synthesis and we don't need to hear oscillator B at all. And then we're going to go under the warp parameter here and select FM from B. So over here. So now oscillator B is modulating oscillator A. And then we're going to switch oscillator B to a sine wave. So under analog, we're going to choose the analog BD sine. And then we're going to increase the FM amount with this parameter here. It'll just add the harmonics onto oscillator A. Now the important part of this high pitch foghorn sound is the octave of oscillator B. So in previous episodes, we used the more lower octave around maybe two octaves or even three. But with the high pitch foghorn, the difference is really just four octaves. Okay, we're almost there already. So now we're going to increase the unison mode just to fatten up that sound. So I say anywhere from three to seven will work. You can go higher if you want. And then you want to adjust the detune. I find it's better when you bring those oscillators closer together. Also, I find it helps when you bring the random parameter all the way counterclockwise. So now there's no randomization. Every time you hit the key is consistent. And now we're going to go into LFO one and we're going to use it as an envelope. So we're going to click and enable it as an envelope down here. And then we're going to turn this into two bars. So adjust the rate to two bar. And then we're going to turn on filter. And then we're going to apply LFO one to the filter cutoff. So now we have some filter modulation. Now, actually, since the cutoff frequency was in the center, we have this bipolar mode and we don't want that. So I'm just going to remove the modulation and just move the knob and then apply LFO one. And now you have the uni mode. Okay, great. Now we're going to adjust the cutoff a bit. Now I find low pass 12 works well. You can try the other filter modes as well. Low pass six sometimes works. Now we're going to go into the effects section and turn on the distortion and bring the drive up. You want to drive pretty high because you want those buzzy harmonics. And then we're going to turn on the reverb and then adjust the mix accordingly. And you want to make sure the low cut is brought up a bit because you want to get rid of those low frequencies in the reverb so it doesn't sound so muddy. Okay, great. Now we're going to go back into the oscillator and then we're going to adjust the LFO envelope here. And we're going to bring this over. You can actually hit Alt and drag and that will snap the point to the grid. Now we can also apply LFO one to the FM amount. However, we're then going to have to adjust the FM point as well as the amount. So it doesn't go so extreme. So we're going to dial the amount back. And 
And then you may want to adjust the wavetable position until you get that sweet spot. And we also might have to adjust the cutoff as well as the modulation amount as well. We're really trying to find a sweet spot here. So you got to tweak the parameters until you find it. Now this is optional, but you can add an additional LFO to the cutoff frequency. So we're gonna use LFO and then bring it over to the cutoff frequency. We're just gonna just bring the amount down. That just allows a little bit of the wobble effect. And you might wanna introduce a delay so that it doesn't happen until one bar. So that LFO only happens on the second half of the sound. Now you can adjust the slope as well as the initial attack. You might want it to start a bit higher. So you can click and add a point to your LFO and maybe bring this up. And that sounded closer. And you want to adjust the additional filter parameters such as resonance and the drive. That just adds additional harmonics. Now as mentioned, there's other waveforms I like to play for the sound. Uh, in previous videos, we've tried the PWM DS and that's pretty good as well. Cream one sounds pretty good too. I find the Mario waveform is great as well. Bottle Blow is another good one. So there's a couple that you can play with. I'm gonna stick to the mellow and, but unstable. And then I'm gonna just bring in some notes. Now you can make additional articulations of your foghorn in your track. What I do is I like to make separate instances. So I'll duplicate this serum. So now we have a second one. And then I'm just going to remove this note here. And I have some end notes here. And I'll just bring it back here. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to mute this serum here. I'm going to bring up the second one. Is that you can play with the modulation in LFO1. So a neat thing that's been done with tracks is to play and kind of create a performance here. So you can add an additional point and maybe go like this and then go up like that, right? So So it's kind of like creating a rhythmic sequence within the envelope. Okay, so let's hear what we got. And I just got this other sub bass here. And I may want to adjust the articulation and make me make this pop up sooner. So you have that bump up, bump up. That's what's happening here. Okay, and finally we can go back to the main sound and perhaps we can add some pitch modulation. So I'm gonna use LFO3 and then we're just gonna make sure it's set to envelope and set it to two bars. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it in the middle here, which means that it's gonna play at the normal note. And as the note plays, it's gonna modulate the pitch. However, I'm just gonna add another point so that the first half plays as one single note and then it starts to modulate downward. And then I'm gonna go into the modulation matrix. I'm gonna select LFO3 and then I'm gonna go into the global master tune and then increase this by two. So LFO3 is now modulating the overall pitch of the synth and it's playing a straight note for a half a bar and then it starts to trickle downward. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so as you can see, there's lots you can do with the sound and it's really how creative you can get. So I hope this video helped. The main idea here is to use FM synthesis and make sure that your octave is four octaves up. And of course, if you want some interesting articulations, you can make separate instances of serum and then you can use the LFO as an envelope and then you can write interesting rhythmic sequences within the LFO. So try it out guys, let me know how you did in the comments. And again, if we can get it up to 400 likes, then I'll give you guys the preset. So thanks for watching guys, keep practicing, and we'll see you at the next video.